our uh, anchor alarm went off because we got down to half a metre under the keel. <sighs> there it is. Our winch seized today. So, uh, the stripper arm's proving a bit of a bugger to get off. So, Beverly's having to sort it all out, aren't you, Bev? Today's passage is up to Skerries, where there's an anchorage just here. However, it's a bit of an interesting passage because we would ideally like to go between these two islands uh, rather than going out and round and back in because it would save us time. Uh, the problem is these two islands are linked by a spit and the water depth on either side is about 10 metres but the water depth on the spit is charted at 3 metres and at some points here about half a metre right into the mid-channel and that's the charted depth, they may be wrong. You know, it could be shallower, it could be deeper. Um, but I would like to go through there. Um, the tide isn't particularly high today and so I'm going to use the rule of twelfths to decide whether or not I need to go through here or round here. And it's a very simple rule and it can be used in anywhere where you've got a nice tidal flow. So this is a tidal chart for Dublin and as you can see it's a lovely smooth curve and it goes from low water to high water to low water and it's nice and smooth. Now some places in the UK and Ireland have bumpy curves and if they do the rule of twelfths won't work but if you're in a place where you've got a nice regular tide twice a day the rule of twelfths can quite literally save the bottom of your boat. So my tidal height today is 3.6 metres and I've got my twelfths 1 twelfth, 2 twelfths, 3 twelfths. My high water is 11.30 and it's 4 metres. So what I should do is each hour I subtract off some of these and I do it in sequence. So for the first hour I subtract off 1 twelfth. That's 3.7 metres because it is 4 minus 0.3. The next hour I subtract off 2 twelfths which is 0.6. For the next star, I subtract off 3 twelfths, which is 0.9. Then I do another 3 twelfths, so that is then 1.3, at 15.30. I do another 2 twelfths, 16.30, which is not 0.7. Uh, finally I do 1 twelfth at 17.30, which is 0.4. Now this differs, this is low water. This differs from the low water figure because I approximated, it's actually 3.5 metres, I did 3.6 to make my arithmetic simple. Otherwise I would have had lots of fractions. So, these are the tidal heights at various times through the day. And the rule of twelfths uses the pattern 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. 1 twelfth, 2 twelfths, 3 twelfths, 3 twelfths, 2 twelfths, 1 twelfth. And that's the pattern for doing it. So, that spit at Scaries, which is half a metre of depth, and that's the spit. And the keel depth on this boat is one and a half metres, and I like to have an extra one metre of safety margin, so I need at least two and a half metres. Okay, we're going to ignore the little the little mess I've made there. So I need at least two and a half meters of depth. I've got half a meter on the spit. So I need at least two meters of tide to go through that gap safely. Which means if I arrive by 1430, I can go through the gap safely. If I arrived at 1530, I can't go through the gap safely and I have to go around the islands. Ideally, I would like to arrive much earlier. But this area here is my cutoff. Below this point, I must go round the islands. And that's what I use the rule of twelfths to do. Ah oh dear, we're approaching what we hope will be our anchorage for the night and there's yet another Martello Tower. The plan is to go between these two islands and then turn in and go behind that village over there, which has got another Martello Tower, you'll note, 
and then we should be able to park there. It's noted for being a good anchorage, so that's what we're hoping to do. It does get shallow between these two islands, but we've done our calculations and we should have about a metre under the keel and we'll just go very slow. It's not for a huge distance and we hope we'll be okay. It's a great feature. So what are you doing? Along, <laughs> I'm <laughs> somewhere in there. There is grease. Yep. And oil. Because on the way here, our um, wimp seized. So that means we've got to find the oil, and it's in the locker. So I'm getting the fenders out so I can get to it. And that's the reason Gainer is hanging fenders on a boat, hundreds of yards from other boats in the middle of a mooring field. A lot of boats have cockpit tables. <laughs> this is this is what we were were left. Oh, um, brilliant. So we're gonna be eating up here today. Up on the uh, up in the deck with our little cockpit table. Meanwhile dinner is in progress downstairs. As you do. <sighs> Our winch seas today. So, uh, the stripper arm's proving a bit of a bugger to get off. So, Beverly's having to sort it all out, aren't you, Bev? Yep, I'm just trying to, just trying to very gently ease it up. Yeah, so. So even when you're in the middle of a rather nice anchorage... You have to take a picture of me like there's some hair everywhere. <laughs> Alright, well I'm taking more of your hands to be honest, but anyway, even when you're in a rather nice anchorage, or in mooring at the moment, mm -hmm. you still have jobs to do, don't you Bev? You do indeed. Beverly's job is progressing. And... Uh, we can now start seeing the winch and what she's got to do with this now is she's got to take it all apart and clean it. I'm not showing her face because it's a picture. Even when you are on your boat there's always stuff to do. Bev um, has sorted out the winch which is good and I I'm now going to do this little job. Basically, the end came off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a little end on. Yeah, so there, I've sorted that out. <sighs> Beverly and I moved our boat this morning. <laughs> anyway, we moved our boat this morning um, because we were on a mooring ball. Um, but at uh, about six o'clock this morning, um, our anchor alarm went off, which basically meant that Jet Beverly jumped out of bed. <laughs> and um, basically, we only had um, 50 centimetres underneath the keel, and we had another 70 centimetres to go. So not really good. So uh, we moved it and we've actually anchored. So hopefully this time, this is our third anchoring, this one will go right. After all, we've run aground once and we've trapped a uh, line under, on, on, on our prop once. So hopefully this anchoring will be fine. Third time's a charm. <laughs>